So we're going to have the best as possible. Once you have viewed the body, uh, we still have some more seats inside, not yet occupied. Please feel free to come in and sit. Let's identify the side that family members are sitting right here. Okay, so family members are sitting here. Um, so we still have seats up front here. And we can facilitate some more persons here. Some more at the side over here. See, them over there not seeing it. Get me on it. Yeah. No, where the link has been seen. Maybe remember some my phone or foreign phone, so maybe now go. You don't have as much stuff for um for yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah. It's on? Mm -hmm. Let me call her back. Call them back. You must pick funny. Let 
that you be kind enough just to put them on silent or vibrate so that they won't interfere with the system that we operate here at the church. This is the house of the Lord and we want you to respect when we are in the presence of a holy God. The opening song, Sister Hewitt. Peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say. Let's finish it. It is well. All right, so now we're going to, the balloon is there, so I'll stay right here. When peace like a river
bow our heads as we pray. Eternal God, we give thee thanks for this day. We thank thee, Lord, that you have ordained it, that we should be here at this Thanksgiving service. Father God, you have loaned Patricia unto us for these years. You have seen it fit now to call her to rest. I ask, Lord, that as she lay resting, the family members, dear God, will see you, dear Jesus, in your full glory. As she lived her life here on earth, dear God, it had impacted, dear God, upon even her children. I ask that they to make, make that bold step to accept you as Lord and Savior before it is eternally too late. Bless them as they mourn their loss now, dear God, which is human. But help them, God, that they will put themselves in that position that when they shall have died, it will be well also with their souls. Take charge of this day's proceedings, we pray. We ask that it will be done to your name's glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. May be seated. Today is just a special occasion. Yes, as we mourn, we don't mourn as those persons without hope. Because we are comforted by the words of the Lord that any individual who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, once they go to sleep, then when Jesus Christ returns, then they too will be called forth. As we now go into the program, we're letting you know that persons who are going to be using and participating in the program, you can look use our platform. And uh, we're asking you, please, to let this be a moment of celebrating the life of, as we affectionately call her, Pat, but we know her as Patrice Elaine Davis. Our first lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58, and this will be done by Michelle Butler, family friend, followed by tributes, and the first will be that of Pamela Davis, sister. Thank you. tributes at this time. We're inviting Pamela Davis, sister, to join us, followed by Lorraine Johnson, 
for the author and we also will be having Jonathan Bartley JP and ask that you come in that order. Thank you very much. Good morning everyone. I was reading the book that the Lord once said. The rain was falling and the book undone. But wise is the man that wait up on the Lord. But when I go to my God in prayer, He has shown me that He's right there. Whatsoever may come will soon be true. In the arms of sweet deliverance, I want to lay my heavy burden down and with my Lord all about. And when my job days are done, in the land somewhere beyond the star, in the arms of sweet deliverance, in the arms of sweet deliverance,
And I want you to know that it is nothing bad that Pat has come over to wait um, to Montreal and do while she's gone. It's only that her appointment is before us. And one day too, we will have our appointment. She has answered the call of God. It was God who called her out of this world and put his loving arms around her. It is said that there are people when it comes to the time to leave this earth, the life they live, they are so tormented that even sometimes the doctors and the nurse have to tie them in the bed. The testimony I have received from those who were near Pat, she has passed away peacefully, which means that the life that she had lived was a peaceful life with God. And so I want to say to you, family members, for a short time, we thank you for lending us Pat in Bontiol. So far, I say, the Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and give her peace until we meet again. Thank you, family members. God bless you. It's always a blessing to leave behind a trail of blessing. And family members, you are the recipients today of a life well lived. We still continue with the tributes at this time. We have a little slot still open for family members and friends. So at this time, if Sean is here or Tiffany, we'll be able to facilitate you at this time. Yes. And uh, this is Brother Sean Jemison from the church that Sister Pat attended. So bless us, my brother. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm a good friend of Patricia, and I'll be singing on behalf of her children. Four days late, 
He's still in the time. Jesus said, Martha, show me the bread. But she said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been there for days. The great stone was rolled back. Then Jesus cried. Lazarus come forth. Then somebody said, He's alive. He's alive. You may be fighting. A battle of faith. You cry to the Lord, I need you now, but he has not appeared. My friend, don't be discouraged. He's still the same. He'll soon be here. He rolled back the stone and called.
have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. Go, eat your food with gladness, and drink your wine with a joyful heart. For God has already approved what you do, and sorry, always be clothed in white, and always anoint your head with oil. Enjoy life with your wife, who you love, all the days of their meaning of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun, all your meaningless days. For this is your lot in life and your toilsome labor under the sun. Ten and last, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working nor in your knowledge nor wisdom. Amen. Thank you very much. All right, I don't know if Bounty Hall was represented earlier on, but if not, we're going into the condolences and I see Bounty Hall Primary and Infant School. So I think they have done their part already. No, they're coming? Okay, very good. So we're gonna take Bounty Hall at this time, followed by Abigail Malcolm, PMP Kiratenko, Milton Miles, JP, and the Lucy SDA Church, Elder Brennan Fletcher will represent the Lucy Church. So we take Bounty Hall Primary and the Infant School, Abigail Malcolm, Milton Miles, and the Lucy SDA Church in that order. Sheila's spouse, 
is also a member of staff at the Bounty Hall Primary and Infant School and they long to be stay with us for a short while and we are very appreciative of that and may her soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon her. This afternoon, we are going to bless you with a song. I got to understand that this was Miss Davis's favorite song. She would sing it every day when she was in the canteen. So we're here to bless you with that song. All right, I'm not a singer, Mrs. Beasley is going to lead us in the singing. Okay, thanks. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You've been in the Your ship has lost a 
to Jesus after I go to your store. So no matter what the challenges are, remember that Daddy Jesus is right there to take you through it. Abigail Malcolm, is she here? Officiating ministers, the bereaved family, let me acknowledge Mr. Milton Miles, the church members, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good afternoon. Proverbs 30 states, Proverbs 31 states, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Comrade Patricia, Patricia Davis, known to me as Comrade Pat. She was a loving woman, a humble soul. She was one who would give her last. Even if it's me, she wouldn't have any after. When you see Comrade Pat, she always has a smile. You could never tell her no moments. And I want to say to the church before I go any further that Comrade Pat was a good community person. She was loved by the young, the old, the middle, the indifference, everybody. And whenever she would turn on that stove to cook, you would be waiting on the meal because you would be getting a good plate of food to eat. It was well looked after with love. Chin is my good friend who is coming back, daughter. And when you will visit Wharf Road, the first thing she will say, boy, mommy, I go come in. And she will care about who is I would leave because you wanted to get something nice to eat where I was pulling because it would be the best. And the day when Comrade Chin called me and said, Abby, mommy has passed, I said to her that God knows best. He knows why he took her home this early. He knows what she was going through. She was always upbeat, but deep inside, she was in pain. So God knew why he brought her home before time. He knows, and I want to say to the family, it is never easy, especially to lose a mom, but she's in a better arm, she's in a better place, and God has taken her home to a resting place. Heaven has gained an angel, a pure soul, we will all miss her. Thank you very much.
hearing the testimonies from the school, from the community. She has left a testimony, she has left a legacy for her children and her grandchildren and generation yet unborn, all her relatives. Not a financial legacy, a legacy of her, her decency, character, and you can say all that is best. Accolades. And so we salute her. And so we say to the children and grandchildren and the rest of the family, celebrate a life. Because we know that God is in his wisdom will grant her a place of final wish. So take comfort. Cry if you may. For Jesus Christ that love us great. And it speaks volume when someone can cry. You have lost a loved one, a great one. And let us cherish her memories. And say thanks be to God. For the unspeakable gift of God. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First thing I have to do is to ask all those that are coming from Hanover, Dry Hill, Rose Hill, and the Lucy Seventh-day Adventist Church, please stand at this moment. All those coming from Hanover, those on the outside, right, they are already standing, and there are some under the tree out there socializing. Thank you. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, those from Bounty Hall, isn't this a message? I want to tell you that right now our church, the church that Sister Pat was a part of, we are having convention and we decide, those of us that are here, we decide that we must make a representation at the funeral service of Sister Pat. Wow. Not even convention could stop us from coming here. <laughs> Having met and known Pat, she deserves much more than this. I am speaking this afternoon twofold. I'm representing the community of Dry Hill, Rose Hill, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lucy. I start with the community. The Bible says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. For henceforth they rest from their labor and their works do follow them. I'm going to ask the children of Pat now to stand. Where is Peter? Peter is outside, I ask you. Chin, Sheena, where they are? Where are the other children? Right, she's at the door. I guess Peter is outside with the masses. Thank you. Your mother did well. Amen. You may be seated. And there are many of you children to go contrary to the life that your mother had lived. Pat came to Dry Hill many years ago. Dry Hill, Rose Hill. And when strangers come to your community, Sometimes many people beat old Pan when them gone. This one, Sister Pat, we didn't beat any old Pan when we heard that Pat had left the community because Pat came and added to the community of Dry Hill. She has left some lovely children to remind us of who she was. Pat came as a comrade, but she left also as a Christian. Amen. Yes. Amen. She, thank you. Pat came and aligned herself. She realized that life cannot continue like that. And I want all of you to know Amen. that beyond out of Christ, Amen. there is nothing. Amen. It is no the silly season. Green and red, you're up and down all over the place. But don't forget that Jesus is still alive. Yes. 
Pop came to Joy Hill and Rose Hill, and she aligned herself to the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lewis Hill. She used to visit us, and she was implored to give her life to the Lord. And unlike many persons who would run away, she accepted Christ, and she was a baptized member of the church. So the poor is settled. There is no need to ask if or but if she had made it right with her Lord. All that we see out there is only her body. We know the breath goes back to God and she is resting now until the resurrection morning. When if faithful she had been up to the point that she died, she will be in that first resurrection. Family members, thank you for having loaned Pat to us. She was a good soul. She was a kind-hearted person. And she was also generous. She was not one of those that made noise at church. But she came, she worshipped, and she went home. Friends, what can we say? She had lived a good life. She had lived a good life. She had not reached 60, but she was close to that. She had enough time to make it right with her God. Family members, follow suit and take a leaf out of the book of Sister Pat. May her soul rest in peace and light perpetual. Sorry about that. May her soul rest in peace until the resurrection morning. We don't believe in light perpetual. On behalf of the citizens of Jai, we say thanks to you for having loaned her to us. Thank you, family members, your church, on behalf of the pastor, the officers and members, and two of the elders, three of us as elders, we are here this afternoon. We say to you, keep hope. She is not gone without any hope. Give your hearts to the Lord. I admonish you to take a leaf out of her book because those things that she did, you can do it also. Amen. Until we see her again, I implore you all to follow behind her. Give your lives to the Lord that when that first resurrection, when the trumpet shall sound and she shall rise, you will meet her again. Continue and God bless you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Elder Fletcher. It's now time for all of us to contribute or to pay our part, and so we'll be collecting an offering. We have been listening to the life or the stories about Sister Pat, and we know that she's a community person, and normally in the funeral service, we know that the offering is in aid of the welfare department, all right, of this church. I'm going to go see. We're all one body, but it will assist in this side of the vineyard. And so I invite the, the deacons. If I can't find deacons from here, I know Lucy, yes, Lucy deacons, they're here. And we are also going to go on the outside too. Because the pockets and the, the, the money is heavy in the pockets on the outside. So we need to collect it and let it do good. All right, let us pray before we begin. Let us pray. Our great God and Father of mankind, indeed we are truly grateful that we can gather in this fashion for the life of your daughter. Your people will now contribute to your cause. May it go towards the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, so we're going to lift our voices and sing in this beautiful hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. So even if you don't have a program, this is a song that we all know quite well. So let's sing it together. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
continue with the program and we're almost there, almost there. We're going to be taking remembrances at this time. Damita Samuels Foster and Felicia Samuels James, her nieces from the deceased, will take them at this time, uh, followed by Stephanie Brown, daughter, and Janelia Davis, niece. So Damita Samuels Foster and Felicia Samuels James, decked out in their pink, will take them at this time.
Stephanie Brown, and Janelle Davis. There is so much to say with so little time because how can I sum up a lifetime of memories into just one day or even for just a few minutes? But let me start by saying, Mumi was a prideful woman. She no wrong. When it comes to God, she no play about that. All if she's sick, if she don't get to reach a 
Fear Church or Lucy, she definitely have a fine one in her song. But she is a never gonna miss, um, she never gonna miss an opportunity to serve God. She was never too talkative, but once you get to know her at Dunny Dun, she will call and be on the phone for hours. Growing up, Mummy always believed in don't spear the rod and spoil the child because I get my own share. She didn't like corporal punishment as we can always hear her warning, wait till we hold you and never do a thing when she hold you. I even see that when I slap my kids, she would say, where you lick them for? You want to lick yourself, let you pick them alone. We were never short on love because no matter where we were, she would find us. Because she had to work, I spent most of my life in South. And trust me, every week, mommy there South. When she come in, mango, banana, chicken, plum, breadfruit, or whatever season it was, she now come empty handed. Mommy loved her family and friends. It showed. She showed kindness wherever she went. And if she had your number, you sure want prayer or a Bible quote a morning time. Something of God in the morning. Try not make a mistake and tell her nothing bad about her kids. Grandchildren are her family, especially her nieces. She will go have you up, that we know. Because I have gotten the length of her tongue due to this. She was there for everyone in whatever means necessary and in whatever category to fill in the gap. You can always count on her for a song at a funeral. I don't think she ever miss any. It's just a pity I can't give her one of the songs where she normally sing at a funeral. Because she and me get to sing in my life for me. To my mother, I loved you dearly in life, and I will love you forever in death. I would give anything just for you, just to hear the voice notes with you singing and praying for us one more time. We love and miss you, mommy. Sleep on and take your rest. Because Monty Hall did that tribute already, I will ask Samaya to sing another song on my behalf. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, Good afternoon church. Good. Good. It is really a pleasure to be here. Um, Stephanie, she is my co-worker but also a friend and to be honest I don't know much about her mom but since I've been here I have gotten a lot and it's good to go to funeral these days and hear that somebody's a god fearing person right? Yes. Amen. So what I want us to always remember and take away from these things is that God is real yes. right? Yes. So even though we're crying and you know I want to feel it because how can a mother's tender care cease toward the child she bears, right? 
So as I'm minister today, it's not about me or about Miss Pat. But the song that I'm about to minister, it will just reflect the person she was. Because trust me, she was going through a lot based on what I got to understand. And she held the faith. Alright? So, just bear with me, okay? Like a ship sailing onward. I said, I'm 
Mr. Parking Doe is dead. She has brought bring out some persons that would never come to church to hear one word. That is one good thing about funeral services. It brings people together. So God will kill some of us to save some people. We can only solve some of us lying here in the world. When we come to funeral. Because brethren and friends, visitors, we will have no excuse. So God has a way of bringing us out. So you run from God. He knows how to bring us back. Don't worry. The program continues. We'll be having a musical item now, a trio from the Lucy Seventh-day Adventist Church, followed by the eulogy, which will several persons will now sing. From Lucy Church. No one get into any problems. Followed by the eulogy, which will be done by Natalie Curdo Winter, a family friend. The program continues. Good afternoon, church. We are from the Lucy SDA Church. And we are here to celebrate the life of our late sister, Patricia Davis, who is no longer here with us, but she has lived a good life. And to those who here are still in the land of the living, can you say it is well with your soul? Well, we are here to ask you a few questions and give you a few advice also. And our question to you is, of your end, sir, God's Christian, for your final destiny. Have you made your reservation of eternity? It matters not if you're young and strong. Doesn't matter if you're 
ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I stand before you today to share some of the fun memories and faith tribute to our beloved Patricia Elaine Davis, affectionately called Pat, or Gabby Ayres, by her loved ones. Born on the ninth day of April, 1967, the youngest of the set of twins for Dorothy, Evadne, McPherson, and Vincent Davis. She was surrounded by love, as they had a big family, quite a lot of siblings and relatives. She would leave home from time to time to stay with her cousin, behind and others, all while attending the senior school, now known as Godfrey Stewart High. Growing up, Patricia was very ambitious. She never stayed in one area. She always seek better opportunities after meeting Wayne, who was her high school sweetheart. She gave birth to her first child, Carrie Wilson, otherwise known as Chin. However, she moved on when things did not work out with Wayne Wilson. She moved back home with her mom and family. That's where she met an Arabian man, Everett, who in turn took both Patricia and June to Hanova, where Pat fell in love with the countryside. They begot their first son, Ricardo Petri, Ricky. At this time, Patricia was a stay-at-home mom. Being, a, being in a new environment, which would prove difficult for most persons, was never a challenge for Patricia. She was a wholesome soul. She interacted with everyone she met. She was warm and kind-hearted. She eventually met some friends in the neighboring community of Rose Hill, which is Dry Hill. Dry Hill was some was just a stone away where Pat would always meet up with friends. While at Dry Hill, she met the love of her life, Simon Brown. While at Dry Hill, sorry, they became great friends, then ventured into a relationship when it went sober with Everett. Pat, Simon lived together for over 23 years where they had three kids together. Sheena Brown, Garth Brown, Peter, in the, and their wash belly, Stephanie Brown, otherwise known as Sweat. Patricia became a workaholic as more kids came into the picture to take care of. Her motto still said, one hand can clap. She went to work, whether it was staying with her family's kids, working at Jockey Factory, the Free Zone, the hotels, or even villas. She was never one to stay in one place, as she was a go-getter. She was a family person, making sure whenever she visits Westmoreland, whether it was mango season, apple, plum, banana, breadfruit, or whatever season it was, all if she had to take old Simon in them. <laughs> should I walk to should I walk and distribute to the entire family from Darling Street but to see the present. And where and anywhere her kids live, no matter the parish, she's gonna make sure they were straight. When things ended with Pat and Simon, she developed even a closer relationship with God. She decided it was time to answer his calling and she gave her life solely to the Lord at the Lucy Seven Day Adventist. She was also a shy person, but when it came to time to praise God, she was the loudest. She was never ashamed of God. You know from the morning messages, every morning, whether she was sick or not, she lived a life serving not herself, but others. A life well lived, as her kids, grandkids, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews can all attest to this. Patricia died leaving her five children, which I called the name earlier before, 
and eight grandchildren. Brittany, Kelicia, Alfonso, Tishani, Tristia, Nahalia, Zahar, and Renzo, and a host of relatives and friends. Your journey on this earth has ended, but your strong, your story continues through each of us. You will always be remembered, always be loved. Your legacy will forever inspire us. And as I close, I want to tell each and every person, thanks for coming out today to give strength to the daughters and the brothers of the late Pat and her brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, friends and cousins or church families. I forgot to mention church family. So as I close, I ask you, please remember the families in your prayers. Sleep on, rest well until we meet again. That was well done. We have sing, we have sung songs, we have listened to persons singing, we contributed to the work of the Lord. It is now time to hear from the Lord. Amen. We couldn't have allowed you to come here and go back so so so. Could make you go back and hear something from the Lord. Amen. So it is now time and I ask that you keep your seat, remain where you are, because none of us know if this is our last message. None of us know. So this afternoon to speak to us is a son of the soil. I speak of our intern, our junior pastor. He is the junior pastor for the Sheffield District of Seventh-day Adventist Church. He hails from, I nearly say, the city of Negril. Because Negril is on its way in becoming a city. He works, he's, he works in the Sheffield district along with Pastor Delgado Black. Pastor Zigario Richards is here this afternoon to speak to us. He will not be talking on his behalf, but he'll be speaking on behalf of the Lord. I invite you to give him your undivided attention. But before he comes, before he tells us what God tell him to tell me. We will now have a song of meditation. And I can tell you, prepare to move your bodies. As brother Jomeo Five will sing the song of meditation for us. And then Pastor Richards will speak to God's people today. God bless you. The Jesus, to take care of all his children. When they are going through some rough times in their lives, when it seems that all around has fallen, yeah, and the devil tells you you cannot win. Thank you. 
maybe another 10 minutes. So please bear with me. As I, somebody said no? As I speak with you. But I'm going to be totally honest. I, I sat there and I listened to, to all the songs that were sung. And I must say that some persons don't like to be identified. They don't like to be, you know, placed on the spot. But I don't think God would forgive me if I don't tell Miss Lorraine Johnson that God needs you. Amen. And if you, if, you, if you don't, my sister, the gift that you have, it will be taken away from you. And I don't mean to flatter you, but I have to tell you, you have a beautiful voice, and that voice belongs in church. And my sister over there, I don't know your name, but if you have not given your heart to the Lord as yet, my sister, God is calling you to do the same. He's calling you to do the same. I want to ask you three questions before I speak to you today. Number one. Do you know where you will die? Number two, do you know when you will die? Number three, do you know how you will die? I want you to contemplate on these three questions as I speak to you under the caption, will your change come? Will your change come? Come, bow your heads with me as we pray. Divine God and our Father, we come before you at this moment to hear a word from you. Oh, Father, I'm not worthy to speak your words, but if you can use a dumb donkey, you can use me. Yes. So I ask, Lord, that you will put words in my mouth suitable for the hearts of your children. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Let God's children say, Amen. Amen. If you brought your Bibles with you, turn with me to Job chapter 14. And I'll read in your hearing verse 14. That's Job chapter 14. And I'll read in your hearing verse 14. The Bible says, If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days if a man die, let me read it again. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service will I wait until my change come. Will your change come? Permit me, my brothers and my sisters, to tell you that the book of Job is a very interesting book. The book of Job helps us to understand the futility of life. The book of Job helps us to, to understand that today we can be well and flourishing and tomorrow all that we have can be taken away. The book of Job helps us to, to understand that it is futile to live for the temporal things of life. The book of Job helps us to understand that the temporal things of life cannot suffice for the things that we need or the things that we desire. The things that our hearts long for cannot be satisfied from this life. But the book of Job helps us to understand that, that in the midst of life there, there is death. And you know the life of Job. The Bible says that Job was the richest man to have lived in all the men of the east. Job had cattle. Job had riches. Job had everything at his disposal. But, as, but in a single day, Job lost all his children. In a single day, Job lost all his assets. In a single day, the brother lost everything that he has worked for. What do you do when the things that make you comfortable are taken away from you? What do you do when the people whom you have labored with and for, when life comes down to your dying moment and those persons cannot be found at your side? What do you do when the things that you hope for and the expectations 
patience that you have are not met. You see, Job would have lost everything that he had. But what I'm here to tell you is that Job's life was not consist of the things that he possessed. Because the brother said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord had given up, and the Lord had taken away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. And when the devil thought that he could kill Job by swords and all pestilence, I hear Job says, I hear Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I hear Job says, though worm destroy this body, yet with my eyes I shall see him. The brother says, I'm not waiting for the temporal things of life. I'm waiting for the eternal. I'm waiting until my change come. I'm waiting until my Jesus come. And I hear Jesus says in John 14, 1 to 3, he says, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that there he may be also. I ask you the question, will your change come? Because we are living in a world where we think about temporal change. We think about renovating our home. We think about changing our car. We think about changing our job. Some of us even think about changing our boyfriend and our girlfriend. But can I say to you today that the most important change is to change from mortal to immortal. And so I hear, I hear Paul says in First Corinthians chapter 15, he says in the twinkling of an eye, he shall be changed from mortal to immortality. And I hear him says, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Because Paul recognizes that though the, though the righteous may die, when Jesus comes, they shall live again. And Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel. And when the child of God and the dead and the dead and the dead and the dead and Christ shall rise first. So I stop by the day to tell you, based on the report I receive, that Patricia is not dead. She's but sleeping in Christ because the righteous never die. I said the righteous never die. I said the righteous never die. They're just sleeping in Jesus. And I want you to know. That one day, one day, a flight will be leaving from this earth, and its destination is glory. And I stop by to tell you that money is not a prerequisite to go on that flight. I stop by the day to tell you that the texture of your skin is not a prerequisite for that flight. The occupation you have is not a prerequisite for that flight. Only one thing you need is the blood.
Hallelujah. Because when you have Jesus, you can look at death in the face and say, Yay.
We're going to ask those of us who are supporting them to stand. We're going to place them in God's hand. Earlier, I saw the righteous indignation of Chin. Chin said that she wants her mother to have a good funeral. Oh yes. I have never gone to a funeral like this before. It was a blessing. So at this time, Max and the children, wherever you are, sons and daughters, aunts, whatever the relationship might be, please, this prayer is for you. Father in heaven, we stand this moment to thank you, to honor you, to worship your name, because there is no God like our God. Amidst our intelligence, it's foolishness compared to what you have been doing from time and eternity. And that is why even in this moment of sorrow, as we grieve, we still remember that it is your utterance that is still being lived out in our days. You have said to our parents of old, don't disobey me. Because if you disobey me, you're going to die. Yes, we see your hands. Even in death, we see your hand. Because you have wrestled with death. And you have died the death. That we should have died eternally. So that our temporal dying, we can have life everlasting. Father in heaven, no. we seek your intervention into the lives of all family members at this time. No one can say that our sister Pat did not connect with you before it's too late. Everyone could have sing the same song and today we did not hang up our, our pots on the willow trees but we took down our hearts, we let out our voices, and we shouted songs of glory and honor and praise because we recognize that you must be praised. And in this Thanksgiving service, Lord, we're asking you to remember, especially the five children, we're asking you to help them to understand that mother has set the example. She has loved hard and she has given all that she could have done so that the country that we live in, the society in which we serve, can be a better place. Amen. So Lord, I pray now that for every family member, they will remember this day and even those who are not present when they watch this video, they will remember the life that was lived and a life that was lived to call them back to the Creator God. As we go now to the place of final rest until the judgment day, we don't know if our sister will be called in the first trumpet or the second trumpet but one thing we know all of us will have to give an account of the life we live so therefore help us now to be intentional about our relationship with you father forgive us where we have sinned and come short of your glory and just in case there is somebody who needs to give their lives to you now. Let them just in the quietness of the moment give their hearts to you because you are the one who answers all prayer under all circumstances. Thank you for answering our prayer. Thanks for hearing us. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Blessed Holy Ghost and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to sit for a while. We are going to be singing the recessional hymn.
But what I'm going to ask before we leave here, when we came, we saw the temple clean, right? So we are going to leave it that way. All right? We are going to be singing the hymn. The family hymn. Okay, so we have a floral tribute. This is how we're going to do it. We are going to sing the first verse of the song. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. During the chorus, the platform part, you will go down. I will say, continue singing, and then the floral tribute immediately after. So when the family members are going out, we'll take it right there, and then the rest of the congregation. So we started off nicely, let's end the back way. I invite you all to stand at the side. Look up, look up, pass, look up. Good morning, I'm Martin. Good morning, I'm Martin. Today's end done. We might have some floral tribute.
vida, la pista de la vida, de mi libertad y la verdadera. Thank <laughs> you. 
God is good. Love my family. I won't touch my time. No. Love my family. Love my friends. Who are who are from here and afar? My family them come from all over the world. My friends, my aunt, my all of my siblings. Georgie can't even come over here. She's so stressed out there. My uncle, cousin, niggas, who don't know. But my tank, who know all of Doggy, everybody, me don't want to let out nobody. You know, just see me. The family they come from St. Elizabeth, Kingston, all over. Just give thanks here, here, and abroad. Thank you all. God bless you all. I <laughs> 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 When our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shall appear in his glory, then this body of our humiliation shall be made like unto his glorious body. Wherefore he is able to subdue all things. At this Sleep time, we are going to sing together, a few in. songs on our program Sleep. while the workmen will be earthing in sealing our sister's tomb. God bless you richly. I know it's like the singers to come and sing as we continue the service. Yes. So the song, the songs are on the back of your program. And the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. We'll start with that one. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder I'll be
Shalama Grand Time up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Meet me by the river. 
your time. All right, thank you so much. The relatives of our dear sister would like to express the following words. Their gratitude and their thoughts of love towards you. The family of the late Patricia Davis wishes to express our sincere appreciation to everyone, whether it was a whether it was a prior said, a visit, or even a phone call. They want to also express their gratitude for everyone showing up today and for paying your respect to our dear sister. We trust and hope that as the family continue to grieve the loss of their loved one, that you will continue to remain close, continue the prayers, continue the call, continue the, continue the visit. Because it is never a nice feeling when you have lost a loved one, especially a mother. I can't tell you what it feels like because my mom is still alive. I can't empathize with you, I can only sympathize with you. And I know that in all that you go through, the Lord will be there with you. So keep courage. As you go from here, remember that the presence of the Lord go with you and He always live and abide with you. God bless you, Richard. Those who go back to Lucy, I stay in silence tomorrow.